What's going on guys? Welcome back to 3D Arcade. Today we are here for the team builder for week four of the MCBA, as you guys can tell. Fresh cut. Decided to cut all the hair off again. This time there was no bounty related, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Obviously everybody's going to notice. Wanted to address it. My hair's a little bit pointy. We're figuring it out. We'll do the thing. Uh, I like the fade though. It's, it's, it's working for me. It's working for me. Maybe we'll go bald next time. Who knows? But jumping into the team this week, we're taking on the Arizona State Espions coach by Sir J Thor also known as uh, Jackson, and uh, he's a really cool dude. I've talked to him a couple times, scheduling the battle at this point. Uh, he's got the flying type team as well. That is his type for the league, and uh, it's going to be kind of interesting for us. But before we get into his team, we'll go over real quick. We've done a couple of free agent transactions. So after the MVP showing last week and uh, just kind of figuring out how the team works and uh, what I'm comfortable playing and how I want to kind of approach the rest of the league, we decided to make some changes. So what we have done is we have dropped Clefairy, Mega Mawile, Dedenne, and oh, who was the other Pokemon? A Diancie. We've dropped those four Pokemon in exchange for two Pokemon. We now have Mega Diancie and we have Clefable. So we've upgraded our Clefable. Excuse me. We've upgraded our Clefable. We've lost Mawile, but we've also gotten Mega Diancie, which is a, a powerhouse of its own in a different way. Uh, so the team is a little bit different, but the team speed tiers are looking a little bit better. And I'm looking at at least one more free agent transaction, maybe for week five as well, to really kind of even out our speed tiers and figure out how we want to operate here. Uh, just because I'm a little more comfortable outside of Trick Room when it comes to, uh, it's just funny with this with this particular team we're building this week, uh, but I'm a little more comfortable outside of Trick Room and singles, and I'm a little bit more comfortable with having average speed tiers, so we don't I don't feel as pressured to have choice scarfs on us all the time. With that in mind, though, we are going to be taking our 10-man squad now against this 12-man squad over on Sir J Thor's team. So going over the Arizona State Espions, we have a very clear. <laughs> Very, very clear threat, and uh, Celesteela is on his team. So the Flying Steel type Pokemon, very hard to hit, very hard for us to hit. We have no stab for it, and uh, and it hits us pretty pretty good. And it's uh, it's pretty bulky. If you're not familiar with Celesteela, it's got 97 HP, 103 defense, 101 special defense, and its attack stats are both in the low hundreds as well. Uh, so pretty bulky. It's just kind of slow. So we're going to see what we can do with it, but that was the first thing I noticed. And we're also taking on Landorus Therian. Unlike in BBR where he's on our side, we are having to fight it this week. And it is scary. I, I feel like people have had to prep for it, but we've got answers for that a little bit better. But his full team, Celesteela, Talonflame, Togekiss, Crobat, Honchkrow, Amolga, Altaria, Gyarados, Articuno, Mega Aerodactyl, Landorus Therian, and Motham. So you can tell there's some pretty big threats here. Obviously, Gyarados is a scary mon. Uh, Crobat's really scary for our team as well. Uh, Togekiss, unfortunately, another trader this week. Uh, our big brother, Togetic, is gone. Uh, Gale Wings, Talonflame could be something. Um, I'm really not sure if he brings Talonflame, but a lot of people that I've talked to that we've but kind of built and mocked with think he brings Talonflame just for the fairy resist, just to discourage us from clicking uh, Moonblast against things. But he has Celesteel already, so I really don't know. Uh, and Crobat. Uh, Crobat obviously hits us with the poison type moves and it has steel wings. Celesteela's got a ton of steel moves. It's got a lot of steel moves on his whole team, honestly. He's got uh, Cross Poison on Crobat, Iron Head on Celesteela, Gyarados, and Mega Aerodactyl. Steel, on, steel Wing on Talonflame, Togekiss, Crobat, Honchkrow, Altaria, Articuno, Mega Aerodactyl. Tons of them. Tons of them. Uh, Togekiss has Smart Strike. Uh, he might opt for Sludge Bomb or Sludge Fang on Poison. Uh, on Crobat over anything else, and then Lando, of course, gets Sludge Wave and Sludge Bomb as well. Uh, and a couple of ones with Iron Tail, which is a really powerful move, and we just have to hope he doesn't click and gets the hit because it is 25% uh, missing. Uh, he does have an Electric Immunity and a Molga if he runs the right ability. He's got a Psychic Immunity and Haunch Crow. He's got a Dragon Immunity in uh, Altaria. Nope, nope, sorry, it's regular Altaria. It's not a fairy, but he has a Dragon Immunity in Togekiss and uh, another Electric Immunity in Lando. So we have to be kind of careful there. I personally think he brings a Molgo, but no one else thinks he does. It was his last pick, I believe. Uh, it's not like a great Pokemon, but it's kind of fast and has motor drive. So we'll see what he does there. Not totally positive. With that in mind, Rock and Electric hit this team pretty well. Ice hits this team pretty well. And then everything else we're kind of learning to play around. So we'll get into our team now. Um, oh, by the way, if I, if I had to pick six, uh, based on just kind of a, a joint group think, I'm thinking he would bring Celesteela, Crobat, Lando, Emolga, Honchkrow, and Mega Aerodactyl. Some people were thinking no Emolga, 
he brings uh, Talonflame instead. Some people were thinking no Honchkrow. He maybe brings Togekiss or Gyarados. Gyarados, I think, is more likely, but Togekiss can also do some stuff to us. With that in mind, getting into our team this week, we're bringing the newcomer, Anderson the Clefable, he's now a big boy, uh, is coming this week with the weakness policy and the magic guard ability. So magic guard means that we can't be hit by things like poison, burn, uh, toxics is poison, leech seeds can't hit us, which is really nice. And uh, it was this or Unaware because he does have a Dragon Dance Mer Mega Aerodactyl, uh, Swords Dance on Talonflame, Swords Dance on Lando. Uh, he's got some good setup mons, and I might regret it. I really might. He might go for it. But I, I get the feeling this is going to be a fast-paced match. And when you have as much coverage as he does, I don't see most of the time why you don't just click moves that do major damage to us and Oko most of our team. But we'll see. Uh, that said, we have Magic Guard. Uh, we're running Soft Boiled, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Cosmic Power. Really wanted Rocks this week, but really, uh, outside of some special tech that I opted not to run because it is very situational, I just needed Ice Beam to be able to hit the Lando, but T-Bolt helps us not get walled by Gyarados, which is really nice, especially because Gyarados will outspeed us in normal situations and be able to hit us with Iron Heads and maybe flinch us. So we are, uh, that's the move set. We're running 252 HP, 240 defense, and 16 speed. We are also bold natured, so we're down in attack, up in defense. Uh, we're a little bit more specially bulky naturally, so that extra 240 is really kind of making up some difference there. We have lots of iron heads coming out as well, I think are going to be, excuse me, be the steel move of choice. And uh, that's just because they can flinch 30% of the time, so really big. Uh, 16 points means that if we're not in Trick Room, we just barely outspeed a Min Speed Celesteela with a little bit of investment if it's trying to speed creep Min Speed Clefable. And uh, yeah, that's the idea here. Uh, Thunderbolt is going to hit a lot of things. Ice Beam is going to hit the rest of them. Cosmic Power is going to boost our defenses. Weakness Policy is going to throw us plus two for our attacks coming off. And we're still, you know, 226 special attack, base 95, pretty nice. And Soft Boiled heals us. So that's it for Anderson. Next up, we are bringing Molly Hooper. The Primarina this week with the Rendo Berry. This was originally Choice Scarf, but I opted for some Trick Room shenanigans to give us some speed options in this game. So instead, I'm bringing the Rendo Berry because Celesteela, uh, obviously this is our neutral steel, and Celesteela has some grass type moves, so this helps us eat some of those, especially if we're behind a screen. Very, very nice. And uh, yeah, that's the idea. So we are here with this. Uh, looking at uh, Torrent ability, I think I might go Liquid Voice. Honestly, the battle's in about two hours. Probably going to calc after this. I might switch Scald for Hyper Voice. And uh, just to help if, if a sub comes off, basically. Uh, being able to uh, hit through the sub and do some major damage. Because obviously a Hyper Voice on Lando is going to still be super effective. And uh, I just kind of want to check that since we are carrying Hidden Power Electric now. So we don't necessarily need Scald to combat Gyarados. Uh, so that might be a change you guys see. But right now we're Rindo Berry Torrent. We have Ice Beam, Scald, Hidden Power, Electric, and Aqua Jet. Uh, there's lots of situations where I'm finding this Pokemon having like 10 HP that it's trying to knock out, but it's going to die because it's being outsped, just Trick Room's over or something. So I wanted to have Aqua Jet. I originally had Flip Turn, but I wanted to have Aqua Jet so that we could maybe still kill something right before right just put it in that range or you know maybe uh we're out there against Talonflame for some reason and uh he's gonna try to priority us uh actually i just i just realized this is a stupid idea because gale wings priority since he's faster would actually be faster than us but you know whatever uh we have the chance we have the chance for priority if he doesn't click brave bird or something uh, so we're running 252 in defense to also help again with those uh, with those physical spe steel hits I expect to be coming off, as well as just our special defense is naturally higher. But we did put four there, and we do have 252 in special attack, and we are quiet natured, zero EVs, zero IVs in speed, down speed, so that we're effective in Trick Room. Unless he expects Trick Room and brings really slow, min speed, down speed, Selly, we're going to underspeed it and be able to do some Scald damage. Scalds can do 45 to like 52 to the thing, I think. If I remember correctly. Next up, we are bringing Mrs. Hudson, the Mega Diancie now. We do have a Mega Evolution in this Pokemon at this point. Uh, so we start with Clear Body and we move to Magic Bounce. So we can uh, kind of play around that. I don't expect him to go for Hazards. Could be bad if he does. We'll have to see how that goes. But uh, this Pokemon's coming with Diamond Storm, Hidden Power, Ice, Stealth Rock, and Protect. Protect is basically for scouting at this point. Or if we do Toxic something, uh, which actually... I think i got rid of all the toxicers so i actually might reevaluate that move as well but protect is there for stalling things uh maybe he gets a tailwind of his own and we want to stall that uh diamond storm hits a lot of his pokemon really effectively hopefully we don't get that five percent miss 
uh, Hidden Power Ice hits the rest of them. Stealth Rocks, if we get a chance to click it, or for some reason we're like forced out with like a Whirlwind early on, maybe we get a Stealth Rocks up and we can chip his team as we move on. And then we have weird EVs on this Pokemon. I wanted attack, I wanted defense, I wanted special attack, I wanted special defense, and I really didn't want to slow it down. So I'm actually going for the docile nature, neutral nature for... I'm sure I'm going to get hell from that, but I'm doing it so that we can keep everything at a neutral level. There was nothing like attack. If we get intimidated, we are already rolling on diamond storms on some Pokemon, so I didn't want to risk that being even worse. Uh, but I didn't want to invest in attack, a defense we needed so we could try to live some moves. Like, I don't think Steel Wing Talonflame can kill us in one hit from full health. Uh, 40 and special attack is just making sure that Hidden Power Ice does 50 or more on some of these Pokemon. And uh, 216 speed is making sure that we are outspeeding with Tailwind everything on the team. So, kind of nice and important. And uh, that's the idea here with Mega Deancey. So moving on, we have Mary Watson, the Guard of War, coming once again with the Focus Sash and the Trace ability this week, so we can trace like Intimidate or Beast Boost or something. Uh, we're running 252 Attack, 4 Defense, 252 Special Attack. We are up Special Attack, down Speed, 0 IV Speed. So when we hit Trick Room, which is our first move, uh, we underspeed everything except, like I said, a Trick Room Expectant, uh, Celestilo, or if he brings Room Service on something. That's the idea with this Pokemon is uh, hopefully we don't get Iron Head flinched, we get a Trick Room up, and then if we don't think he's gonna switch, we can Destiny Bond, take something down with us. Uh, if we wanna be really, 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 really safe for some reason, we can click Memento, uh, or if he starts, if we click Destiny Bond and he doesn't kill us, we can Memento around him as if we're still in Trick Room, so we can lower the offensive output a lot, get a free hit off the attack, and then bring in another Pokemon. That came up in one of our uh, potential things. It's a way to sack us without him having to kill us. And we can also, I does it lower two stages? Yeah, it lowers attack and it's opposite weakness policy, except they don't have to hit us. We die, but we're probably at one anyway, and then we can lower them down. So if he tries to set up on us instead to avoid a destiny bond or something, uh, we can then lower his offensive output, bring something like Clefable in, start setting up while he's weak and he has to force switch for a turn. Uh, and then we have knockoff. So if we're in the situation, uh, this came up once or twice where he's like near death. We could probably kill him with a, you know, outspeeding and trick room with a knockoff, and then we can destiny bond the next mon or something. Or if we really expect the switch, like he doesn't want to sack something, and we really expect the switch, and then we can knock off whatever comes in, and then memento it or destiny bond it or something. You know, there's shenanigans here. It's a shenanigans mod completely. Uh, main thing is we don't want to get flinched. So ideally, we're pulling this strat off on a Pokemon that doesn't get Iron Head, and uh, that's something I'm going to be watching for. Next up, we got Moriarty the Grim Snarl coming this week with the Light Clay ability and Light Clay item, sorry, and the Prankster ability. We bring in Reflect, Light Screen, Trick, and Ice Punch. This is where we had the weird tech. I was it was suggested to me that we try to bring Ring Target, which is a move that removes type-based immunities, so that way we could hit Lando with a Electric type move. The problem is that almost never happened, and then I ended up with a Clefable that had rocks instead of Ice Beam, and it couldn't hit the Lando. I didn't like that. So we're going to be tricking our light clay onto stuff. Ideally, we get both of our screens set up. This is pretty much our dedicated lead. And then we either, you know, if he does some swapping and we have a lot of health, we can maybe get an ice punch off. Maybe we can steal a scarf from Lando. Maybe we can steal a life orb or some specs or something from something else. I don't really care. But we, we kind of, you know, give something an item it doesn't need. And then its item slot is wasted. Uh, we have 248 in HP, 252 in attack. And we are up in defense and up uh, with four in defense and four in special defense. That is so that I believe an Iron Tail from Jolly Lando with a Choice Scarf, if he's physical and he Iron Tails, cannot kill us. So if we make the wrong call on Lando and go for Light Screen, expecting one of his poison moves, we still live it and we still get our second one up, or we can, even if we only have the Light Screen, we can then trick him. That's the idea. Hopefully that works for us. And last but not least, we are bringing Mycroft, the Silvalli, Silvalli Fairy with obviously Fairy Memory and RKS system. Uh, we're running Ice Beam, T-Bolt, Tailwind, and Thunder Wave. So this Pokemon is a special attacker. It can hit pretty much everything on the team. Same moves as Anderson, right? Uh, it gets a Tailwind up and it outspeeds the whole team. And it can also make it so that Mega Deancey outspeeds the whole team. So even if he, you know, Tailwind gets one attack, then we have two more turns of Tailwind that would Mega Deancey could come in and ideally click Diamond Storm and not take damage uh, and, and not miss and kill two more Pokemon. So it's, it's a pretty nice offensive threat there. We're 252 in special attack, 4 in special defense, and 252 in speed to make sure that we do outspeed everything with a tailwind. Uh, timid nature, and uh, that's pretty much the team, guys. I'm really hoping it works out for us. 
Personally, I feel like it's an uphill battle with the Selly and the Lando, but a lot of people seem to think it's an even match, so we'll see what goes down. Uh, hopefully we win, hopefully we or at least give a good showing. And uh, next week we take on the Dragon team, so that'll be a fun team to build for as well. And I guess I will let you guys go here. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the team build. Let me know what you think of the team down in the comments below. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the battle. And subscribe if you're new because you don't want to miss the battle after you watch the team builder, right? So see you there. Peace.